Good afternoon, everyone. A 31,000 square mile hole opens in the Antarctic sea ice. Keep in mind, every one degree is 60 miles when you look at this. Now suddenly the Arctic's gonna be ice free by 2040. What happened to all the predictions about 2007, 2013? Scary graphic on the left, real ice concentrations on the right. See that dark red line? That's where we are right now. Bottom northeast quadrant Greenland, massive ice balance increases. I don't know exactly how on the western part of Greenland they're showing melting when it's 8 degrees Celsius below zero. Enter David Dilly, global weather oscillations, forecasting a lack of a warm water pulse this year, increasing Arctic sea ice. And when we talk about melting ice, let's look out at millennia, not years or decades. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 and click the bell so you can get the latest updates. Interestingly, a 31,000 square mile hole opens in the Antarctic ice sheet. It is the first time scientists have observed this type of hole of this magnitude since the 1970s. What? 1970s, the cycle repeating? I thought it was once in a lifetime. All this ice is melting. It's never happened before. Jumping to today's Antarctic sea ice concentrations, zero degrees, right where the orange asterisk is, is where the ice hole has opened up. You have all these ice holes telling us it's the first time the ice has ever melted, yet it happened in the 70s as well. What a bunch of ice holes. Trying to push the political agenda to make it appear that this is the first time it's ever happened. What about the volcanoes that are erupting under there causing melting? Oh, don't discuss that. That's too inconvenient. Grand solar minimums causing more volcanic eruptions. Bury that under the desk. Wide out here for you. A little bit closer in, finally, with some of the latitude longitude markers here remember each one degree is 60 miles on top of this the arctic will now be ice free by the summer of 2040 but see when i was growing up it was always the arctic will be ice free by 2007 peter wadhams and al gore and then the media says again it will be ice free by 2013 peter wadhams and al gore it never happened, so they're pushing the bar back to 2040 now. Expected to melt away to nothing. We should just keep believing them because they were so correct up to this point. Graphic they included from The Economist right here, showing the Arctic sea ice from 1980, 2016. So I thought, wait a minute, let's look at the Arctic sea ice concentration 2017. I know this is two weeks later than the very maximum of the melt season. Yet this year, the melt season stopped a month early, so there's going to be more ice. Let's compare the two side by side. Now keep in mind, the right graphic is two weeks past the average end of the melt season. Now you can't tell me that much ice just suddenly gained in two weeks. No, this stopped a month earlier than usual and it's been gaining ice ever since. So keep your eye on the left there, and we're going to match it up with the graphic here, October 16th. Now, put this in perspective in most of the line graphs and charts that you see across the internet, that dark red line is where we are now, clearly above the last years that they were saying, oh, the Arctic's going to melt into oblivion. Well, it's not. We're gaining ice now. Notice the standard deviations there, two standard deviations. And jumping over to NSIDC, since the Arctic ice is actually into the standard deviations that doesn't look good for a political agenda so on the right side you can see how they just rebranded it interquartile and interdecile range to make it appear that the arctic ice is still below by actually using the numbers visually representing it so you continue with the narrative that the arctic sea ice is melting taking a look at greenland ice mass budget southeastern greenland wow look at the gains on the glaciers there but what's really startling and stark for me is on the western part of Greenland, 
it's eight degrees Celsius below zero. It's been like that for weeks, plural, yet they're showing melting and loss. Yeah, I'm baffled by that one. I didn't know that ice melted when it was below zero Celsius or below 32 Fahrenheit. Nook, Greenland, month early snows. So this follows the trend of increased ice cover when we enter a grand solar minimum with increased snow. Enter David Dilley, Global Weather Oscillations. He's forecasting out increased Arctic ice based on the Arctic warm water pulse on a 72 year cycle broken down into nine year cycles. What he's saying is this year, this Arctic warm pulse is not going to be warm. It's not going to be anything close to what we had in the 1999 or 2008 pulse to look for increasing Arctic sea ice, drastic increases. And when this happens, there's going to be more ferocious snowstorms and blizzards across North America due to the cooler air. Now with all this nonsense where an extra thousand kilometers melts off and it makes front page news, let's look at the overall ice coverage over the millennia cycles to truly put this in perspective. Let me wide out for you here. Let's look back at 19,000 BC, 10,000 BC. Wait a minute, in the last couple thousand years the ice has remained pretty much the same. But I guess those living 2,000 years ago never had a political agenda either. It's just shifted over to global taxes. What was it 2,000 years ago? Seems like it's human's kind thing to always have a political agenda to control others. But nature doesn't. It just follows cycles. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you want to learn more about these warm water pulses into the Arctic, join me for episode number 35 with David Dilley, where we talk about the onset of major global cooling and discuss all these points included in the video.